Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome everybody to our 2018 annual uh, observance of Exercise Tiger, a service that uh, started here in the city in 1986 with several of the veterans from Exercise Tiger, uh, including Mr. Joseph Theodore, and, and Mr. Jamie Rigo, Mr. Norm Shadia, who had created the organization of uh, the, uh, the veterans. In 2007, the memorial was uh, shifted from the west end of the city and brought down here at Fort Tabor Park. And in 2009, the Veterans Advisory Board uh, began assisting the veterans uh, to take over the service, uh, which we now do up until this to, uh, today. What I'd like to do is to just welcome our dignitaries that we have present here. We have uh, right behind me, uh, Mayor John Mitchell. We have City Councilors uh, at Large, Brian Gomes, and uh, Ward 6 City Councilor, Joseph Lopes, both of my past uh, council presidents. We also have from the uh, state uh, delegation, our uh, state reps from uh, District 11, Bob Kazira, and District 13, Tony Cabral. As uh, we re begin, I also like to just thank the uh, different reenactors uh, that are here from the YD division, as well as the British reenactors and our uh, veterans organizations, the, uh, the United States Brotherhood of Tankers, as well as the United States Marine Corps League uh, for participating. And I'd like to also point out our honored guest, uh, that it's another year that he's with us, Mr. Vincent Ricciardi, who is a machinist mate for his class and one of the survivors of Exercise Tiger. Yeah, permission to post the colors. Post the colors. Color guy, Captain. Post the colors. I'd like to now introduce Peter Clark, ex officio from the Veterans Advisory Board, who will begin uh, the rest of the services for today. Thank you very much. Uh, I would ask you to please remain standing for uh, invocation, read by Mr. Bruce Stewart, uh, Veterans Advisory Board. The Army Vice Prayer. Our Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray thee thine almighty arm to strengthen and protect the soldiers of our country. Support them in the day of battle and in the time of peace, give them safe from all evil. Endure them with courage and loyalty and grant 
that in all things they may serve without reproach, as seeing thee, who art invisible, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Please take your seats. On behalf of the mayor, John Mitchell, and the Veterans Advisory Board, I'd like to welcome you to Fort Tabor Military Park. We're thankful to have you here today to help celebrate and uh, commemor to memorialize uh, those service members who were lost during Exercise Tiger. In preparation for the invasion of Europe, two major dress rehearsals were scheduled, one of which was Exercise Tiger. For the United States 7th Corps, which consisted of 30,000 servicemen, the assault exercises were held at Slapton Sands, West of Vaughan, an area in England. This area was chosen because it closely resembled the actual conditions that the invasion forces would face in one of the five beaches of Normandy. In calm seas and in fair visibility during the early morning hours of April 28, 1944, following a pre-darkness simulated assault by forces of the 4th Infantry Division, a convoy of, of flotillas of eight LSTs cruised the English Channel. They were fully loaded with a force of engineers, chemical, and quartermaster troops, not scheduled for the assault, but to be unloaded in an orderly fashion along with trucks, amphibious vehicles, and heavy engineering equipment. For this exercise, the commanders had issued the use of naval artillery and live artillery fire. Also, in addition, soldiers and sailors were issued live ammunition for their rifles and machine guns. At this time, during the exercise, nine German torpedo boats out of Cherbourg, France, learning of heavy radio traffic, were ordered to investigate the area. To their surprise, this convoy of flotillas was largely unprotected. The night was broken by a call to quarters on the LSTs as explosions and gunfire filled the sky. In the confusion of whether this was part of the practice assault or an attack, a great deal of, of anti-aircraft fire was aimed at enemy aircraft that did not exist. In reality, the German torpedoes hit three LSTs sinking two and bad, badly damaging one that eventually made its way back to port. Many of the soldiers and sailors were below deck and drowned. Contributing to these losses were the the heavily waterlogged overcoats and the misplaced life belts. And there was also a lack of protection for, these, for this convoy of flotillas and also typographical er errors and the wrong radio frequencies were given at this time. The total tally included 198 sailors and 551 soldiers dead for a total of 749 service members that were lost. Thus, this was the largest, this was the largest uh, fatality and costliest training incident in World War II. Uh, the strictest of secrecy followed this event for many years for fear for the, what, the, what, this, what this attack had done. We didn't want to give the Germans any surprise or give them any information of what they had accomplished. And no one lifted the order of secrecy until after the final invasion. And with time, this event received little attention. That was until in 1971, a British citizen named Ken Small moved to the area off Slapton Sands. He discovered this military type debris that was on the coast, and he made inquiries of how and why this equipment was there. After a great deal of communication with various individuals, he was given details of the event, and he wanted to establish an exercise Tiger Memorial. Through his efforts and his own personal expense, at the bottom of the ocean there was an M4 tank. He had that tank raised and a monument was erected on a small piece of land behind the beach. 
The exercise, the exercise Tiger Memorial was the first of its kind. The exercise Tiger Memorial that we have here today was made through a very well-known veteran, the late Mr. Joseph Theodore. Mr. Theodore was a prominent veteran in this area, worked at the museum for many years, and he's a friend to many of us here. He was a man of great vision and patriotism, and he had mixed emotions when he learned of events of Exercise Tiger, and that this story went basically unreported for all those years. So he corresponded with Mr. Small and received many details of the event and of the memorial in England. So Mr. Theodore urged his fellow Americans to join him in seeking special recognition for Exercise Tiger. He started a letter writing campaign to propose resolutions at all forms of government. Suddenly he conceived the idea of twin monuments across the sea. So he formed an Exercise Tiger Memorial Committee com composing of various veterans organizations across the city of New Bedford. And the Exercise Tiger Memorial here in New Bedford was the first of its kind in the United States. This memorial was originally located on the grounds of the Andrew Dayhill Post, 1531, uh, located on Park Street. The memorial was dedicated in 1989 to honor the 740 members who perished during the attack. In 2004, at the opening of the museum, Mr. Theodore initiated the movement to have the tank relocated to this location so more history and more people could learn and understand about Exercise Tiger. And the rededication of this memorial took place at this present site in April 28th of 2007. So there are many veterans that made this, this, this possible for this Exercise Tiger to be brought and to become the first in the nation. And Mr. Theodore was one of those gentlemen. And we really appreciate what he has done for us in bringing this memorial to us. And as Mr. Theodore was a member working at the museum, uh, as his health was declining, there was one April 28th, he was down here at the museum, and he mentioned to one of the members at the museum, is there going to be any exercise type memorial service? And there wasn't one. And in January of 2009, the Veterans Advisory Board was established. And when we found out information that there was, that Mr. Theodore had said those remarks, it touched us as a board. And we decided collectively that the Veterans Advisory Board would plan and one of our main memorials that we would do would be to exercise Tiger. So that's why we are here today in addition. Uh, the purpose of the Veterans Advisory Board, we're here to advise the mayor on all veterans activities and help to provide uh, proper recognition for the continued memorials across the city and help to educate our young uh, citizens, such as the young Marines that we have here in attendance today, that they will carry on and learn some of the history that we have in the city of New Bedford. Also. We've been doing this service for eight years, and the Veterans Advisory Board has been doing, uh, we've been meeting since 2009. And our scope of operations have, has gotten bigger. Uh, we have recently, under the guidance of our Veterans Service Officer, Mr. Christopher Gomes, and our Chairperson, Mr. Robert Bromley, we have begun to plan and execute the Veterans Day Parade as well as the Memorial Day Parade. And with the closing of the 100th anniversary of World War I, uh, the mayor has given us guidance to conduct three, uh, to memorialize three memorials that we have across the city. Uh, and we are in the early stages now of planning events to commemorate those activities. Uh, we have three locations. We have Bailey Square in the North End, named after a World War I ace fighter pilot. Also, we have down in the, not far from this location, we have uh, the Joseph Monty Memorial. Mr. Monty was, he was the first Cape Verdean American to receive the Purple Heart, and he was a prisoner of war. And also the 101st Field Artillery. Uh, it's a prominent memorial located at Route 6 in Kempton Street. Uh, you may have passed by that many times. It's a really wonderful statue of a World War I soldier, a doughboy, loading a, preparing to load an artillery shell. 
So those are three that the Veterans Advisory Board are in the early, early stages of planning uh, memorials and to celebrate those. And culminating in the final event, which will be on uh, Veterans Day, when the parade concludes at the city of New Bedford's uh, main public library, there affixed to the building is a list of over 112 members who were lost in World War I, so we're gonna have a roll call there. So we're in the early stages of planning that, and it's been fun to work with the colleagues on the Veterans Advisory Board in preparing those. And I'd like to, this time to uh, recognize those individuals. We have our chairperson, Mr. Robert Bromley. Our vice chairperson, Mr. Bruce Duar, United States Army Vietnam veteran. The secretary and also the veteran service agent of the city of New Bedford, Mr. Christopher Gomes. United States Army retired, Operation Iraqi Freedom. We have, every group has an officer in charge. And our officer in charge is one of my favorite board members that we have here, and that's Miss Grace Regan. Colonel Grace Regan, the United States Air Force retired. She was also, uh, when we met to, uh, as a board, uh, Mrs. Regan came up with an idea and mentioned to us that she would like to see a memorial dedicated to the women that has served in the United States Armed Forces. So she sparked that idea and along with the City of New Bedford Council and the mayor, they were able to secure the funding and made that happen and that memorial is just right to, uh, to my left, right behind you. So we want to thank Grace and the City Council and the mayor for establishing our, one of our newest memorials there. We have Mr. Randall Mata, United States Army Persian Gulf veteran. Our World War II veteran, Army veteran, Mr. Louis Ferreira. Global War and Terrorism Air Force veteran, Mr. Anthony Resendiz. We have from the United States Marine Corps, combat veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom, Mr. Christopher Holkamp and his family are here. And our two newest members that we're delighted to have on and who have already made an impact is Ms. Karen Kosmi, United States Air Force, who helped put together the events of today. And Mr. Daniel Goulart, a United States Navy retired, retired uh, warrant officer from the Navy. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce our veteran service agent of the city of New Bedford, Mr. Christopher Gomes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's another great day to hold this service. Uh, you know, each year we do this, it's still hard to fathom that a training exercise that no one would have thought uh, would have injured them or killed them happened and went by without anybody knowing. To have almost 800 soldiers and sailors killed uh, and no one to know about it is, uh, you, you just can't really put words to that one. Uh, many of us who served in the military, you went to training exercises and that was kind of the last thing in your head that you were gonna be injured or killed during that training exercise. You were training, being prepared to go do something where you could be killed, not training for it. Uh, but as they did, like professionals, they went and trained and they, uh, adapted the best that they could to overcome that situation and many of them lost their lives some of them came home uh, like Mr. Ricciotti uh, and you never truly get over it but you try to live your life uh, to the best that you, they, uh, th those who have lost would expect you to and that goes for any veteran when you come back from combat or from an incident like that you're gonna live your life to the best uh, that you can for the memory of those that you lost uh, but with that exercise uh, Many things changed over the years. The way you conduct training, uh, the way NCOs and leadership watch over the training. Uh, so those so those lives weren't lost in vain. Uh, over years, training exercises became uh, safer to the best that they could be. Uh, so you know, at least we can sit there and think back that at least no one was killed in vain for that uh, exercise, and that many great things came from that, uh, including the uh, invasion uh, during D-Day. 
Uh, as a service officer, you know, I get to meet veterans and their families every day in the system and what they uh, can apply for, what they're entitled to. And it's a great uh, responsibility that, that I carry and I enjoy doing it. And, uh, you know, I just I thank the city for allowing me to do that. And by the advisory board, my office and the city conducting these exercises every year, uh, we keep shedding light on the veterans who have passed before us, hoping that in the future when we go, people will shed light on what we've done as well. And as the closing of my email always says, no veteran truly dies until they're forgotten about. So once we stop doing these memorials, once we start flag, stop flagging cemeteries, once we stop putting wreaths on, on the memorials throughout the city, that's when we have issues. But on a day like today, we uh, remember, sit there, remember the people we've lost before us, uh, try to think the happiest thoughts we can of them, believe they're in better places, and uh, live our lives the way that they want us to do. And uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce the mayor of New Bedford for remarks, Mayor John Mitchell. Thank you, Chris, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, we really lucked out with the weather today, which is entirely appropriate for this great ceremony. Um, I want to just start by offering uh, words of thanks, um, and you've heard some of these names already, but uh, I, w I do want to thank the, the Marine Corps League for being the honor guard today, and the Yankee Division, and other reenactors uh, who are here today would make the, uh, the ceremony extra special, uh, for sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the Tankers Association are good friends. We've done so much work around the city over the last uh, few years to make our monuments uh, look appropriate um, and uh, becoming of the, the monuments they are. Really, it's great to see you guys uh, here uh, as well. I want to thank the, uh, all the elected officials uh, who are here who, to a person, have had um, uh, unambiguous track records of supporting veterans in New Bedford uh, and beyond. Uh, State Reps Tony Cabral and Bob Cazera and City Councilors Brian Gomes and Joe Lopes. Uh, thank you for being here and for all of your support of veterans' causes uh, here in New Bedford and again beyond. Uh, I want to thank the Navy Band for being here again. Thank you for, thank you for treating us to, uh, to your talent uh, for starters and taking the time to be here. Thank you very much. Um, and I want to just, I want to thank uh, uh, everyone who serves on uh, the VAB, and you've heard the names before, but Bob is just out there doing all kinds of stuff every day. Um, you know, Grace Regan, Bruce Duart, uh, Dan Goulart's on board. It didn't take us long to, uh, to rope you in to, uh, to everything. We're glad you're jumping in with both feet as a Navy SEAL would. Um, and uh, I, I just want to give a special thanks to, uh, uh, to Chris Gomes and to Peter Clark, uh, whose uh, words I can't really add to uh, all that much right now, but uh, I do want to thank both of you in, in Chris's case for just hustling all the time for veterans. I mean, just going the, the extra mile every single day so that the veterans in our city get what they deserve. So I just want to ask you to join me in another round of applause for our veterans agent, our director of veteran services, uh, Chris Gomes, who I just would remind everybody, and he's in a squirm at this and uh, he's, he's going to glare at me for saying this, but he did, he was, he is the, the reigning uh, veterans director of the year in Massachusetts and for good reason. So thank you, Chris. And for Peter Clark, uh, who serves the city every day as a firefighter and does, uh, does that uh, very important public service job very well, thank you very much, but he, uh, he's also a, a decorated veteran, someone who has championed this cause year after year and has made this um, made this event happen. And as, I, I just uh, single out your dedication to, to this event, Peyton, uh, and uh, it really means a lot to everybody. So thank you. And of course, Mr. Ricciardi, it is always wonderful to see you at this event. Uh, you make it especially great and uh, uh, it's and, and inspiring. So thank you again for, for being here this year. Um, I, uh, as I said, I can't um, offer uh, much in the way of, uh, on, in addition to uh, Pete's and Chris's eloquence, um, I just would offer a couple of thoughts, um, some of which you've heard from me before, some, some not, but 
uh, if I'm repeating myself, I think it bears repeating. Um, you know, the first thing is what is is really what we're honoring today. You know, we, we do as as Peter noted, um, we honor um, we we honor specific people. We honor specific events. We're doing we're going to be doing things at a, to to memorialize and to commemorate and honor the service of of uh, the men who from New Bedford uh, fought in the First World War, and there were, were many uh, this year. And we we do events all year long as appropriate, and oftentimes the focus is drawn to um, to specific battles, to specific acts of heroism. And sometimes the discussion, uh, and appropriately so, um, uh, gravitates in the direction of um, glory won on the battlefield. And and we, we it is appropriate for us to uh, to honor our heroes in that way um, every day here in New Bedford and any, everywhere in America. But this this particular ceremony is different. You know, we are we are honoring um, those who fell in a training exercise. Um, which is quite, in some ways, quite different, but it's not. And there's a fine point to be put on it. And that is, what we oftentimes, again, we oftentimes are drawn to acts, specific acts of heroism or specific uh, or well-known historical events. But here, we're really honoring something quite different, and that's this. It is the commitment. It is the commitment to serve the flag. It is the commitment to exalt the republic that is really at the heart of military service in America, really since the founding of the Republic, right until today when uh, now as we speak, there are kids from New Bedford on naval vessels in the Mediterranean, um, just not too far from Syria, and there are kids from New Bedford out on patrol in the hills af of Afghanistan uh, and, and many other places. Uh, and they need to know, they need to know what they did when they, they sign up and they swore an oath to uphold the republic that what they're doing matters. It counts. That is what this particular event is about and that is when you get right down to it, that is what military service is about. And, uh, and, and, and that's and it is entirely appropriate, fitting and appropriate for us to honor that today and every day. And so it, it, is, uh, it is great, it is just wonderful that we have this ceremony year in and year out to uh, to do just that. The other thing I'll say is, I said I had two points. Here's the other one. The other point's this. This exercise, this, this event could happen anywhere in America. So of the crew members uh, on board, uh, on, on board uh, the LST and uh, all, the, uh, all the, the, the army units that were on there, all, they're all drawn from every corner of America, everywhere. There were a few kids here from New Bedford. Mr. Richardi's from Worcester originally, but they came from everywhere. But it's New Bedford where this event is honored, the one place in America, or at least the first place in America, where those who perish there are remembered reverently and regularly uh, by and officially. Um, and I can't be, as the mayor of the city, I'm so proud of uh, what that reflects on our community's values, on who we are, and w what we treat as important. Um, New Bedford does it differently. And I'm proud to say as the mayor of the city that um, you know, I'm happy to be here today. I am honored to be here today. And, and so pleased that all of you came out today to share in, that, um, in, in this celebration of that service. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Also, on behalf of the City of New Bedford, the Honorable Mayor Mitchell and Christopher Gomes are going to present this proclamation to Mr. Vincent Ricciardi. I'll come over to you, Mr. Ricciardi. Let me read it first. Don't go anywhere. All right. So, so this is an official proclamation of the City of New Bedford, and it goes like this. The freedoms we enjoy as Americans have been purchased and maintained at a high price throughout our history. We owe a great debt to those who have served in defense of this nation. Throughout the generations, their sacrifices have preserved our unique form of government dedicated to human rights and respect for the individual. 
The spirit of those who so bravely fought and exercised Tiger lives on in the continued preservations, preservation of our freedoms and the ideal of democracy that serves as an example for all the oppressed persons of the world. In honor of the 749 service members who lost their lives preparing for the great waterborne offensive, those who remain after the devastating attack remain steadfast with resolve. Machinist first mate, first class, Vincent Ricciardi, United States Navy, stood aboard the LST-54, uh, part of the United States Navy European battle group and bravely fought before the entire world to pay tribute to his fellow sailors and soldiers lost on that fateful day of, of, of April 28, 1944. Uh, as mayor, I, John Mitchell, uh, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2018 as Exercise Tiger Survivor Day and urge all citizens to honor our veteran, veterans and rededicate themselves to the preservation of our liberties under our Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have here today two state representatives that will give their remarks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you and good afternoon. We heard earlier this afternoon from Peter Clark explaining the particulars of Exercise uh, Tiger. And um, I think it's important, and I'll preface my remarks by saying it's important to remember those who served our country in uniform both in defending our country and defending everything this country stands for. And today, the local veterans group honor World War II veterans and their contributions, and in particular, an, an exercise, a training exercise that um, had horrific consequences that, as the mayor said, we recognize those that participated in Exercise Tiger for their commitment to don the uniform and fight for our country and everything it stands. Their service is worthy of being remembered, and hopefully a lesson was learned, I'm sure there were. Within two months of April 28th, American, British, and Canadian forces landed on Normandy on June 6th, D-Day. Within one year of that landing, on May 7, 1945, the war in Europe concluded. So thank you for, thank you, Greater New Bedford, for remembering those who participated in Operation Exercise Tiger, those who lost their lives and those who served and survived. And thank you all for coming out and, and remembering. It's so very important. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let me begin by thanking the Mayor's Veterans Advisory Board, uh, the wonderful job that they do, not only during this ceremony, but throughout the year celebrating many other uh, events related to veterans. So thank you very much for your dedication and your service. I'm always humble uh, to be before so many men and women that have so much courage and that have done so much to defend our freedoms, our liberties, that we live and enjoy every day. This is not any different today. We are here to, to remember and to celebrate the lives of those 749 men that died on that day. Because it is important for us to have the ability to stop at least a few minutes in time uh, from our busy lives that we all have to really pay tribute, pay homage to individuals that gave so much the ultimate sacrifice so we all could be here enjoying the liberties. You know, I remember the first time, um, well, I remember the ceremony, the first ceremony on this, for this exercise, Tiger, on Park Street, 1989. I also remember attending for the first time as an elected official also on Park Street in 1991, along with, at the time, Representative McIntyre as well. Uh, and 
the work and the dedication that Joe Theodore really did to make sure this ceremony, make sure this memorial would happen. Not only that, at, those beginning, at the beginning of those years, but also throughout time. And it is because of all of you and because of the dedication of the city of New Bedford, the mayor's office, the city council, we have Brian here and Joe with us, and the city council has always been and continues to be great supporters of anything to do with veterans, be through celebrations and events of this nature or other matters that are important. Uh, so we want to thank the city council as well. So on behalf of those that I have the honor and the privilege to serve in the House of Representatives in Boston, the folks from the South End, right here in this location, the folks from the West End, the folks from downtown and South Central, we thank all of you and I hope that we be back here next year. And if I may propose to the Mayor's Advisory, Veterans Advisory Committee, I know we have remembered Joe Theodore before, but I think to, next year will be 75 years of this event. It would be probably appropriate to also uh, do something more recognizing of Joe. He was a wonderful person and someone who really never stopped until we started celebrating this event. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I'd like to present on behalf of the City Council, we have a, a, a service coin, a challenge coin that we'd like to present to Mr. Mr. Vincent Ricciardi. Thank you, Brian and Joe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored tonight to have our guest speaker, our keynote speaker. Uh, our keynote speaker is, Ms. is Colonel Kevin Gollinghorst, United States Army engineer. He was raised on a farm in Walcott, Iowa, and received his commission in the Corps of Engineers in 1996 from the United States Military Academy at West Point. He served in many positions throughout his time as a young junior officer, and he commanded the 1st Brigade, 25th Infantry Division, Striker Brigade Combat Team at Fort Lewis, Washington from October 2004 until April 2006. He was then selected to attend the Royal School of Military Survey in England and served with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. In 2008, Colonel Golinghorse attended the ILE and Command General Staff College Advanced Military Studies Program at the School of Advanced Military Studies, both located at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas after which he was assigned to the United States Forces Afghanistan headquarters in Kabul as a strategic planner in the J-5 section. Colonel Golinghorst then returned to Fort Leonard, Missouri to serve as the operations and executive officer for the 169th Engineer Battalion, 1st Engineer Brigade. Before being selected to return to Kabul as a deputy XO in plans for the commander of the ISAF, Upon redeployment, he was assigned as a deputy commanding officer of the 1st Engineer Brigade before taking command of the 554th Engineer Battalion. He's currently a graduate student at the United States Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. He served two tours of duty in Operation Enduring Freedom and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. He holds an undergraduate degree in civil engineering, a master's in defense geographic information, a master's in military arts and sciences. He has several awards and is decorated highly. He's a well-respected well respected leader, an active duty leader in today's army. He holds the air assault badge, also the tapper sab, and he's an airborne ranger qualified leader. Mr. 
Correction, Colonel Golinghorse is married to the former Julie Gill of Lakeland, Florida, who is a United States Naval Academy graduate. They have two children here, Gabriel and Ariel, that are in attendance today. So ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you our keynote speaker, Colonel Kevin Gollinghorst. <laughs> Thank you, Pete, thank you for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so what a pleasure, what an honor for me to be here with you today. Uh, and I, it, you know, it's a tough act to follow for all these gentlemen that have shared the background about Tiger, Exercise Tiger, uh, given the introductions of the many uh, special guests here today and fellow veterans. Uh, but uh, it's my honor to share a few words about how I first heard about Exercise Tiger. Uh, as Pete mentioned, uh, Fort Leonard, Missouri is out in the Midwest, the home of our engineers. And as a mid-level Army leader reporting back to Fort Leonard Wood, where I got my start over 22 years ago, I was thankful that the, the brigade commander of the 1st Engineer Brigade at the time was really researching and uh, giving honor to the history of that brigade. And uh, the 1st Engineer Special Brigade was one of the many units and subordinate units under the 1st Engineer Special Brigade that was at Exercise Tiger off the coast of uh, England. And so just as a, as a leader, uh, I wanted to know more and uh, realize the importance of those that came before us and those that served uh, in times of training and, and in wartime and the impact that that uh, exercise had in the success of D-Day as was mentioned earlier. And so it's very special again to be here out east and have the opportunity to, to be with you today and I'm so proud to know that uh, this city and, the, and this group here has been honoring uh, those veterans and the family members that have supported them over the years. Uh, Mayor, I would, uh, I would like to update you and the group here today that there, thankfully there are other uh, ceremonies across the country. Uh, this is very special knowing that uh, this tank faces to the east as the tank in uh, Slapton Sands, England faces west. So it's a very special location and connection uh, to the, the Twin Monuments. Uh, but I would like to mention as I was on my way up here, I just had a chance to speak with uh, the director of there's a National Exercise Tiger Foundation. Uh, out in Missouri, where I came from, there was, uh, there's a monument there in the middle of the country, and there's a ceremony to being held today. On both coasts, out in California and then down in New Jersey, there are being ceremonies held with the Coast Guard uh, today as well, and as well as a Coast Guard cutter off the coast of um, Cape May that is laying a uh, ceremonial wreath today to honor those fallen. And so as we join here, uh, many others are also remembering, and I think that's so important today. I'm thankful that uh, you all have joined us. So I will impart three brief remarks, three points, and then I will continue with our ceremony. But one, one reinforcing point down at the Naval War College, they impart to us as a more senior leaders, as we have this time to reflect and, and study at the, down in Newport, Rhode Island, is to read, discuss, and to write. And so those three points I'll build upon just briefly, but I will impart to you in relation to Exercise Tiger. So leading up to today, I, had, I took time to read. And the gentleman that was mentioned already, uh, Ken Small, was the, the British citizen that found the tank off the shores of, of uh, Slapton Sands. And he published uh, the first book in 1989 called The Forgotten Dead, which tells many of the stories of, of why he took time to, to honor those fallen um, uh, in England. Uh, many years, several years later, Nigel Lewis, Kenneth Garn, and others have published other books that I would encourage you to check out. Uh, and just a few of the, the stories and connections of those uh, <laughs> like Mr. Riccardi, that served on that fateful day. And thank you, sir, for, uh, for being here with us as well and for your service. So I challenge you to read, uh, whether it be online articles or the, 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 the text that were taken, that those authors took time to, to write down those stories and those memories of, the, of those uh, veterans. Uh, and it, it draws as a source for us to, so those memories are never lost. The second part is to discuss, to listen to one another, to, of the stories, first-hand or second-hand stories of those that were there and those families and uh, friends that were affected uh, and discuss that. So as you head out today, let, that, let the ceremony not end. Let, let this be a time to share what you've heard today uh, and to share with others and inspire them to, to read and research about uh, Exercise Tiger. And the last one, pretty simple challenge, but may often hard to do is to write and to publish. And again, to continue to share that story uh, that others have attempted to do, uh, but I challenge you, whether it be uh, anybody up for writing a book whether it be a book, that's pretty daunting, maybe an article in a local veterans magazine, 
or maybe just uh, social media, you know, uh, online on Facebook, or send a tweet about what today means to you and what you've seen and, and heard here. So whatever whatever medium it may be, I encourage you to write. All right. So uh, again, what an honor uh, to be here today. I encourage you uh, to never let these memories uh, fade. Um, the important uh, connections between the Army, the Navy. I appreciate having the Marine Corps uh, and Air Force veterans here today. And uh, Pete, I don't know how you did it. You even got a fly flyover of a Coast Guard aircraft today. That was, that was impressive. So yeah, thank you again uh, for inviting me to join you. Thank you for all that have made this possible today. And God bless you. Uh, thank you, Colonel, very much for your time. Uh, again, we have a token of our appreciation from the city of New Bedford. The counselors have a challenge coin for you. Uh, from a grateful city, we thank you. It has a seal of the city on there. That's wonderful. Thank you. And for your wife, we have a nice, uh, a nice pier point glass uh, from members of the museum. So on behalf of the museum and the city of New Bedford, we'd like to present this to you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering into our honors portion of uh, today's ceremony. Uh, as we do enter into the honors portion, we just want to also recognize uh, if there are any members of the Merchant Marines uh, that are here or had family members of the Merchant Marines, uh, we want to thank them and honor them for their sacrifices that they provided in helping transport uh, large amounts of equipment and personnel uh, into the Europe European and Pacific theaters of war. Uh, also, we are fortunate enough today to have uh, two family members, two families from Exercise Tiger Survivors. We have Mr. and Mrs. Dale and Suzanne Williams of Northboro, Massachusetts, and their son uh, of the late Mr. William O'Connor who served on LST 5-4. Uh, we're lucky enough to have them here again, once again, uh, Mr. O'Connor and Suzanne and Dale. Uh, please, please stand the family members and their granddaughter, great-granddaughter of William O'Connor is here today. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, also, the family of the late New Bedford native, Mr. Louis Sylvia, excuse me, Mr. Louis Souza. Mr. Souza was born and raised in New Bedford on Church Street until joining the Navy in 1943. Uh, his ship, LST 511, participated in Exercise Tiger, and his brother James and sister Thelma are here, here today. Uh, James and Thelma recall how Lewis came close to losing his life, and during the attack, the ship's crew heard something hitting the side of the ship and later learned that it was a torpedo that failed to explode. So the Sousa family will be forever grateful for uh, Lewis's efforts and Lewis's survival during that attack. And Mr. Sousa passed away in July 31st of 2014 in San Jose, California. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to come here, and thank you for Lewis's service. Uh, we also have uh, service members who have uh, passed on. There's no family members here for them today, but we would like to uh, remember Mr. Robert Fredericks and uh, the late Mr. John Starks as well. Uh, in addition, two, two gentlemen that have uh, passed on who were uh, instrumental in with Mr. Joseph Theodore in creating uh, the first Exercise Tiger Memorial Committee are Mr. Jamie Rigo and Mr. Norman Shadia. And those two gentlemen were uh, instrumental and did participate in this exercise and service uh, in the past couple of years until they had passed. And uh, I'd just like to read a, a quick bio of those two gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Jamie Rigo served in the United States Navy from December 1944 until August 1946. He served as a lead helmsman of LST 370 and attained the rank of seaman second class. While serving, Mr. Rigo recalled a story to me. He, he shared a story where he was, he was proud of uh, one particular convoy that he was, he was part of, was that he was able to participate in a convoy that had uh, liberated American and prisoners, prisoners 
correction, British prisoners of war. And he was uh, really touched that he was able to do that. And Mr. Rigo was a past president of the first Exercise Tiger Association. And also uh, another gentleman, Mr. Norman Chartier, served the United States Army and was with the 4th Infantry Division, the, the division that uh, many of the soldiers that were involved in Exercise Tiger were from. His first assignment in February 1943 until November 1945. Uh, his first assignment while he was in England, he had to treat many of the wounded and injured uh, soldiers and sailors that were wounded during Exercise Tiger. And he remembers that he was not to ask any questions uh, to, to the men uh, that, he was, that he was taking care of. And he did it. He did his duty. But he knew something great had, had happened uh, just due to the large amount of devastation and injuries that were around him. Uh, after he had finished his assignment as a, as a medic, he went to the front lines, participated in the D-Day invasion, and uh, in addition to his combat medic duties, he, was, he served as an infantryman. And he was assigned to the, uh, to the elite Night Raider platoon of the 2nd Battalion. And at this time, the Night Raider Battalion uh, was a special group of soldiers well-trained that went behind enemy lines, uh, conducted, cleared obstacles for advancing infantry units, conducted intelligence gathering operations, and were really uh, the tip of the spear at that time for the 4th Infantry Division. And uh, he recalls uh, many stories, and he was uh, a, an outstanding volunteer uh, to this museum here. And there are many people here who are aware of, of Mr. Shadia, and we would like to uh, thank him uh, for what he had done. Uh, also, uh, let us take a moment of silence to remember those servicemen from the greater New Bedford area that have given, them, have given the ultimate sacrifice. Sergeant Joseph Camara, United States Army, New Bedford. Lance Corporal Michael Ford, United States Army, New Bedford. Petty Officer, Second Class, Tyler Trahan, United States Navy, Freetown. Lance Corporal Patrick Gallagher, United States Marine Corps, Fairhaven. Specialist Peter Enos, United States Army, Dartmouth. Lance Corporal Matthew Rodriguez, United States Marine Corps, Fairhaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored today to have an Exercise Tiger survivor, Mr. Vincent Ricciardi. Mr. Vincent Ricciardi is an Exercise Tiger survivor and served in the United States Navy for three years. He was assigned as a machinist mate's first class in the engine room of LST-54. Mr. Ricciardi remembers the confusion and uncertainty of what happened that day and remained steadfast in his duties as in machinist mate first class in the engine room of LST-54. He knew he was participating 
in an operation, but was given little information and details of the event and knew that it was a secret event. He performed his duties to the best of his ability under those terrible circumstances, and he witnessed firsthand the account and destruction and devastation of one of the badly damaged LSTs that eventually made its way back to the port. So we're honored to, hey, to, today to have the family of Mr. Vincent Ricciardi here to join him. Uh, we would ask Mr. Ricciardi and the Brotherhood of Tankers to uh, move forward to present and lay the memorial reef. Rifle, rifle salute, stand by. Harry, hold on. Rifle salute, execute. Please remain standing for the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I read the Navy prayer. O eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, vouchsafe to take into thy almighty and most gracious protection our country's Navy and all those who serve therein. Preserve them from the dangers of the sea and from the violence of the enemy, that they may be a safeguard unto our country and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions. 
that the inhabitants of our land may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please take your seats. Uh, the Mayor's Veterans Advisory Board, we would like to thank uh, the Colonel and his family for attending today's service. Also, the Veterans Advisory Board, again, likes to thank the City of New Bedford City Council, the state delegation that was present, and uh, the Office of the Mayor. We appreciate your efforts in helping us conduct this service, as well as the City of New Bedford's Department of Public Facilities, the City of New Bedford's MIS Department, the Fort Robin, Fort Tabor Historical Society and the artifacts that they have donated to this event. We appreciate their efforts. The United States Navy Band Northeast, the United States Army Brotherhood of Tankers, the Marine Corps League of the Greater New Bedford area, uh, the young Marines that are showing up tonight, and also the Red Devil Brigade of New England and the Yankee Division. We appreciate you for coming down here and allowing us to have that nice, colorful, uh, authentic representation of World War II here. Uh, in closing, this tragic reality of war not only s uh, s signifies uh, the, the, the service of the 749 service members, but it also gives us a chance to reflect upon the hard work of the local veterans, men such as Jamie Rigo, Noam Chartier, Mr. Starks, and Mr. Joseph Theodore uh, for allowing us the tradition to carrying on these events in their name. So the Veterans Advisory Board, we thank them. We thank you for your attendance. Uh, attendance. Please, uh, there are uh, a light refreshments in the museum. Uh, there is also an exercise tiger display. If you haven't seen it, uh, it is, it's really uh, well done and deserves your time and attention to, to go look at that. So again, on behalf of the mayor, we thank you for attending. And Mr. Ricciardi, we appreciate you coming down here again. Uh, thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Mayor, stand by, everyone. One last thing. Uh, Mayor, permission to retire the colors? Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ceremony. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel.